Today on 21st Century Business, explore state-of-the-art technology, innovative business strategies, insights from cutting-edge corporations around the globe, a visionary look into the answers of tomorrow today. Business leaders, business solutions, 21st Century Business. Welcome to 21st Century Business, I'm Jackie Bales. New technology companies focus on the world's two largest markets, the U.S. and China. Yet they're often without the experience and contacts needed to penetrate those markets. ANZA Technology Network is helping technology companies in Australia and New Zealand enter these major markets. And Vicki Forrest, CEO at ANZA, is here with us today. Welcome, Vicki. Thanks, Jackie. Good to be here. Vicki, why are your clients having a hard time reaching a global market? What are their main struggles? Even though some people say the world is flat, uh, there are many challenges that companies looking to expand their business from a national to an international market have to deal with. We've seen a wide range from critical funding and financial challenges to the relatively minor cultural and acclimatization issues. Um, ANZA Technology Network partners with our clients to turn their challenges into opportunities. Hmm. So tell us more about your company, Vicki. How exactly does ANZA Technology Network help companies branch out internationally? In the 10 years we've been in business, we've worked with over 500 companies that are looking to expand their business beyond their home borders. Hmm. Many have met with incredible success. Some have gone back to the drawing board to rethink their approach to the market. Mm -hmm. In the last decade, we've developed mentor networks in four countries. We've built deep relationships with business and technology experts, and we've accelerated businesses internationally in many, many ways. Interesting. Well, let's see how ANZA is helping their clients succeed in this 21st century business field report. Oh, Vicky's fantastic. Uh, from the first meeting, um, everything she's done for us has been heading us in that right direction. Uh, it's been efficient and uh, the connections again and the links that she's provided getting us moving here at the right pace at the right time. Um, particularly coming over for this first event, the Always On Mobile event, has been an absolute coup for us. Vicky, business accelerators have been around a long time. What is different about ANZA's approach? We're one of the longest established business accelerators focused on bringing Australian and New Zealand technology companies to the US. Our network of mentors and subject matter experts create a very safe environment for them to have a go. We actually reject more companies than we accept into our program. Um, we have a very keen sense of when a company's ready for the US and when they're not. So we save some companies untold expense when they're not really ready for an international market. What differentiates ANSA Technology Network is our unique mentor network and our track record of successes. Hmm. So it speaks for itself, basically. What types of technology companies do you work with? I know your ANZA Technology Network. What kinds of technologies are we talking about? We work with a wide range of technology companies, from clean technology to the medical technologies, through software and um, internet and, and mobile solutions. Australian technology companies are really focused on developing new innovations. There's no shortage of innovation down under. Hmm. I think that's kind of the reputation of Australia. You know, really, it's, it's the kind of thought of as an outside the box thinking sort of place. Absolutely. We chose to work with ANZA Tech because the reputation is first rate. We looked around, there are a lot of uh, people introducing people to the States, but uh, the connections, the experience, uh, the links they could provide in bringing us over here were absolutely the first reason we went with ANZA Tech. Why branch out to the US or China? You know, I don't know how many of your viewers know, Jackie, but Australia has a population of about 20 million. That's mm. about 2% of the world economy. Okay, so we need more people, more customers. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> to be commercially successful, uh, Australian companies have to move their technologies to global markets like the US and China. Mm -hmm. Well, they're certainly setting their sights on the biggest places. At what stage does a company need to be to be ready for the U.S. market? We think there's two critical components when we're assessing companies' readiness. One is the product. It needs to be production ready. It needs to be scalable. 
it needs to be able to be taken to a large market. And the other critical component is the readiness of the uh, entrepreneur who's leading the company. They need to be driven, they need to be passionate. You just can't take on the US market half-heartedly. Mm, I'm sure. What are the greatest challenges then for Australian companies doing business in the US? Well, apart from the size of the market that I've already mentioned, there are really um, three key challenges that we see and we, we call them um, attitude, accessibility and action. By attitude, it's the ability of the entrepreneur to step outside of a comfort zone of a small market to take risk but also to temper that with the knowledge and wisdom of understanding what's realistic, mm -hmm. what's going to work in a large market. Mm -hmm. Accessibility, um, I often call the tyranny of distance. Uh, I fly to Australia six times a year and it's a 14 hour flight. Right. And unless Richard Branson is going to uh, really bring space flight to us, there's nothing you can do about that. <laughs> Uh, and by action, it's the ability to make a decision about where to focus um, scarce resources mm -hmm. in a market that spans from San Francisco to New York. Um, it's, it's, it's those decisions and making those actions at the right time that ANZA Technology Network assists our clients in. Mm -hmm. There were two compelling reasons why we chose to transition, if you like, to the States. Uh, the size of the market here, I mean, compared to Australia, uh, literally there are sort of four or five advertising or markets in Australia, whereas here you're looking at, you know, three to four times that. And secondly, we're looking to roll out a global business and an IT business, and Silicon Valley is the centre of the universe for IT businesses, and that's where we need to be. Uh, the three major challenges I think we've faced are the size of the market. I mean, it's far, far bigger than Australia, where we've got sort of four or five markets. There's three to four times that. Uh, the pace, the pace, we're used to taking a little bit more time in Australia, whereas here, you know, everything just happens and people want to move fast. Now, we can work with that, but Anza Tech have been great in helping us, you know, get step up, I guess you'd say. And the third one is definitely distance, because it's literally you know, a full day's travel and jet lag to get over when you come here. So you want to know when you come here that you're ready, that everything's nailed down and tight and you're going to make the most efficient use of your time. Vicky, what cultural differences do you see between Australia and the US and how much does it matter? Well, it's not just about cricket versus baseball, Jackie. <laughs> um, there are many differences from the education system to the banking systems to the legal systems. There are a lot of cultural differences between Australia and the US. It's not dissimilar to the differences you see within the US between, say, Los Angeles and New York, but on a much more extreme scale. Mm -hmm. uh, Australian entrepreneurs are very adaptable and they have adapted. Um, but they sometimes need a little hand-holding to get over the initial barriers. How have the U.S. economic challenges affected your business? Um, I don't know if you viewers know this, Jackie, but Australia is actually a bright spot in the economy. Huh. Australia's uh, economy has been booming largely because of the natural resources and the demand from China and the growth in that demand from China. The downturn in the US economy in 2008 scared a few people off, but mm -hmm. really now we've got a situation where Australian entrepreneurs are moving from a growth economy to the US, picking up bargain basement opportunities. Oh, it would be a good time then. It, it certainly is. Occasionally the Australian dollar, which is going very strongly, can create some challenges for exports. But generally, we see it as a very well counterbalanced yin yang between the two. We mm -hmm. think it's great for both sides of the Pacific. Hmm. Why would a successful US company look to a small Australian company for new technology? US companies understand that they need to look outside of their internal R&D to really expand and grow market share at the pace that today's business requires. So it's about open innovation. Um, US companies are becoming less proprietary and more focused on external new technologies that small companies offer. So for small technology companies coming from Australia and New Zealand, there's an unprecedented opportunity because of this emergence of open innovation. 
the top challenges for success in the US would be the size of the market, yeah, far greater opportunities, but at the same time it's four to five times the number of markets to work into. So working out the strategic entry is critical for us and Anditech have helped us in that. Uh, the pace, the pace. Australia does tend to move more slowly, whereas here everything's at warp speed. We can step up to warp speed, we love warp speed, but you really it's helped us to step up working with Anzatech. And definitely the third one would be distance because you know, it's a full day to get here. Uh, jet lag hits me particularly. And uh, so you really want to make sure that you're using every moment that you're here uh, to best effect and Anzatech have worked with us on that. Antitech's helped us overcome those challenges by doing a lot of work with us beforehand. So we spent a lot of time working with Antitech via Skype, et cetera, and getting things ready so that when we came here, we hit the ground running. As a result, we've made great strides in terms of moving towards a launch and in fact, probably accelerating our launch into the US, even in the few days we've been here. You know, Vicky, many businesses in your market are using mentors. What makes an Anza mentor unique and, and how do you find them? Well, at ANZA, Jackie, we don't go for the comfort of using Australian expatriates to mentor our Australian clients. Our mentors are all American uh, experienced executives mm. and they push the Australian client outside of their comfort zone. Mm -hmm. And we think that that tension between the US executive and the Australian entrepreneur is what pushes rapid change and rapid success in the market. We really find our mentors through our personal networks. It's a very, very personal development. So in a very personal sort of way, you're almost a matchmaker then, matching up the Australian and New Zealand companies with these American mentors. Huh? That's, a, that's a critical part of our entire business. And sometimes when I get pushback from my clients around uh, being picky about who they get matched with, I explain to them, you know, the way we do this is it's an arranged marriage, it's not speed dating. <laughs> Very funny. You know, Vicky, how important is it for an Australian or New Zealand company to have a presence in the United States or China? I mean, with technology like email or Skype, couldn't they just run their business virtually? Uh, Jackie, one of the great fallacies of virtual communication is that you can build relationships remotely. I use Skype all the time, but I'm talking to people who I know very, very well. Um, seasoned business executives understand that you need to build personal relationships to do business. And if you're going to do business in the US, you need to show up in person. Since starting the mentor program with ANZA, I think the major thing that's changed for us is that we've become incredibly focused. Uh, we're looking to roll out a global mobile business and it's absolutely critical that we use every resource effectively. Working with Anza Tech has really honed those skills and made us uh, totally, totally fixated, focused, using every second most effectively. Do you work with American or Chinese companies that want to set up a business in Australia? Our primary focus has been working with Australian and New Zealand companies into the US. With our expansion into China, we have found that it's become a real two-way street. Mm -hmm. American companies see Australia as a great base for expanding their business into the China market. And the clean technology innovations in Australia are a great investment opportunity for Chinese investors. Hmm. So we see our businesses really operating in many directions through that whole Pacific Triangle. Very interesting. And your relationship with with China. Do you have the Chinese mentors for the Australian and New Zealand companies as well? And is all that the same? It becomes much more complex when you get into obviously a country where English is not the first language. So we look for mentors who are very fluent in both Mandarin and English and if possible have a really good grasp of the cultural differences between the two countries. It's very difficult to find that blend. Mm -hmm. Many of our mentors are actually native Chinese who've been educated in the Australian market. Oh, well, it sure is a fascinating approach to business. Are you worried at all about taking successful businesses from Australia and New Zealand and sending them to the United States or China? I mean, what, what would the long-term effect of this be? We find that the Australian companies we work with who become very successful in the US always help their networks back at home. In our experience, entrepreneurs who have been successful 
always give back to others. It's a very virtuous cycle. So you're not concerned at all about the companies just pulling up stakes and going, wow, the grass is much greener over here. No, it actually builds businesses back in Australia as well. A very common model is when the sales and marketing team from Australia uh, come to the US. As I said, you need to be close and in person with your customers, but leave their um, R&D and engineering teams back in Australia. And as the business grows in a market this size, the size of the US, then the, in, in turn, the R&D and engineering teams grow in Australia. So it really builds more jobs and a better economy in both countries. Absolutely fascinating. Vicki, it seems like your company's services will benefit so many small businesses in Australia and New Zealand that wish to grow and expand and benefit businesses in the United States and China. So quite a concept. Thanks for being here to share it with us. Thanks. It's been a pleasure, Jackie. And thank you for watching. For 21st Century Business, I'm Jackie Bales.